the wonderful students. I'm back again for your civic education. How has been your day? Last time when we met, we continued the series on capitalist democracy. Let me refresh your memory a little bit. We talk about how political parties compete for power in a democracy. I gave you the definition of a political party. I told you they use they make use of ICT manifesto, which is a formal document containing their plans and programs, as well as what they intend to do if voted into power. We talk about branding vehicles. We talk about making use of logos and posters, making use of advertisements and jingles, making use of social networks. Today, we are going to divert a little bit. We are going to talk about poverty alleviation in a capitalist democracy. We are going to talk about the importance of employment in alleviating poverty. And we are also going to talk about factors that can promote guaranteed employment. The importance of employment in alleviating poverty. What is poverty? Poverty is a state of lack. Poverty is when you can't afford the basic necessities of life. That is food, shelter, and clothing. When someone cannot afford these three, or when these three are lacking in someone's life, then that person is living in poverty. When a family cannot afford the basic necessities of life, then poverty is reigning supreme in that family. And how do we eradicate poverty? Through employment, gainful employment. Now let's look at ways to which employment can alleviate poverty. The importance of employment in poverty alleviation. Number one, employment enables people to meet their financial needs and promote the standard of living. When you are employed, when you are gainfully employed, when you, 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 you are expecting an income at least at the end of the week, at the end of the month, or at the end of a quarter, then your standard of living will improve. It will come up. It increases your purchasing power. And you are able to meet your financial needs. Rather than go a borrowing, rather than, rather than begging, you are able to dip your hand into your pocket, bring your money, and buy what you need. In other words, employment empowers you to get what you need and to improve your standard of living. That is, if you have been living in a room and pattern before, now with employment, when you are gainfully employed, you can move to a room and parlor, or you can move to a two or three bedroom apartment, or at most you can move to a duplex. It improves your standard of living. It, it shows on you that your standard of living is improving. Number two, employment helps in reducing crime rate, which is traceable to poverty. 80% of crime rate in the society is traceable to unemployment. Because an idol and is a devil's workshop. Someone who is not employed will think of evil. Someone who is not employed will think of what to do to survive. Because he needs to eat and he needs to wear cloth. The other time I was telling you about hundreds of youth that I saw using this uh, festival arm. To, to, to fight. The arms were fighting and the one that, that wins will collect money. And I said to myself, after the festive period, after the festival, what happens to this set of youth? They go back to crime. Because definitely they must be occupied. They must find something to do. And once they are not employed, then they resort to crime. And so employment reduces crime rate and criminalities in our society. 95% of criminals don't have a don't have means of livelihood. And that's why they resort to crime. Number three, employment 
helps in reducing illnesses that are linked to poverty. At least, we all know that to some extent, if you're employed, if you have money, to some extent you can afford some treatment. And so, with employment, there's reduction in level of debt that is attributed to sicknesses. Because people are able to treat themselves. But some who is sick, who cannot afford the money for prescribed drugs, death is imminent. Years ago, I was at a hospital where the leg of a man was amputated because he couldn't pay 5,000 naira meant for the treatment. And so as days were, were gradually going, days ran into weeks. And after two weeks, the leg got swollen up. And the next thing to do is to amputate because he couldn't afford the money for treatment. And so with employment, people are empowered to treat themselves of any sickness that they may be suffering from. A lot of death are as a result of inability of the person to treat himself, inability of the relatives or the family to afford money for the prescribed drugs. Also, an employed person is able to afford the basic necessities of life, thereby reducing the rate at which people fall sick. When someone is malnutritioned, sickness is imminent. At least scientifically speaking, even though I'm not your science teacher, some sicknesses are linked, are traced to malnutrition. Like kwashioko. If you don't have enough protein, kwashioko is imminent. And so an employed person is able to afford meals that are balanced in diet. Not just taking starch and starch and starch and starch. And so it thereby reducing the rate at which people fall sick. Employment creates opportunity for individuals to learn skills that can make them self-employed in the future. It gives individuals opportunity to learn one skill or the other. For example, someone employed as a factory worker in a candle producing company gradually will learn how to produce candle. I have worked in a candle factory before. And so if you give me the necessary equipment, give me the, the necessary facilities, I can produce 200 candlesticks in two hours. I can produce and pack it. I already have a skill. An employed person will develop skills learned from that place of work. And that skill will help him in the nearest future because he can start a business of his own. He will be self-employed in the future. And do you know what? He will also be an employer of labor because he will employ others who will work for him. Someone who is employed as a worker in a shoe factory gradually will learn how to make shoe. And there's nothing stop stopping him from starting his own small business. First of all, mending shoes and later producing shoes to be sold in the market. And gradually he becomes an employer of labor. He employs a lot of people and he contributes to national development. A gainfully employed person can also employ others, such as drivers, cook, as help to work for him, thereby increasing the flow of employment and also reducing unemployment in the country. I told you I have been a candle factory worker before. If I have my own candle factory now, I will employ people who will work for me. I will employ candle machine operator. I will employ those who will pack it. I will employ drivers who will drive the product to the market to be sold. As time goes on, I will employ cashiers who will take money from customers and so on. And later, I will employ personal domestic workers such as drivers, such as cook, 
we will, such as house help, we will help me in the house because I need them. And what happens? I am creating jobs. I am helping in national development. I am helping to reduce crime rate in the society. I am helping to reduce unemployment in the society. Employment reduces the rate at which people rely on government for the provision of certain necessary amenities since they can provide it for themselves. It reduces the rate at which people rely on government for, for this, for that. For example, in my own area, we need a good bridge over a particular river so that the place can be motorable. With employment, we can contribute money as residents of that area to construct the bridge by ourselves. We employ people who construct it rather than writing letters upon letters to government to come and please do it. We will do it on our own. We have reduced the rate at which people rely on government for one thing or the other. And let me tell you this. Government alone cannot provide everything. You either take it or leave it. Government alone cannot provide job for everybody. And so there is need for people to create jobs. There is need for people to learn one skills or the other so that they can create jobs for others. And so employment reduces the rate of unemployment. And it also reduces the rate at which people rely on government for provision of amenities. On the national scene, employment speeds up national development. It speeds up national development because more people will pay their tax into government cover. When more people are employed, it increases internally generated revenue from tax. And so when money realized from tax increases, government is empowered the more to provide amenities inability of government to provide certain basic amenities is as a result of of low income they get as a result of little money they get from tax but when people are employed when people work and they get money they will pay tax pay as you are and when they pay tax the income of government increases. And when income increases, when internally generated revenue increases, the likelihood is there that more social amenities will be provided. More roads will be constructed. More bridges will be constructed. And my area will get one. More hospitals will be built. More doctors, more nurses will be employed. More schools will be built. More teachers will be employed more universities will be established and more lecturers will be employed as a result of employment. Now we want to look at the factors that can guarantee or promote employment. Factors that can promote guaranteed employment. We are talking about employment, how it helps in national development. Now we want to look at the factors that can promote guaranteed employment, that can make sure the employment is here, that can make sure that people are employable. It is one thing for you to be jobless, it is another thing for you to be employable. All right? Now, the factors that promote guaranteed employment. Number one, free qualitative education that prepares individuals for challenges ahead. Agreed, I may be jobless, but if I'm to be employed by university as a lecturer, do I have the necessary qualification? Am I trained to be a lecturer? It is one thing for the job to be there. It is another thing for me to fit in. And so there is need for qualitative education. There is need for people to, 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 to prepare themselves for the challenges ahead. Number two. We also need an enabling environment, such as peaceful political environment, attractive employment laws, 
the environment must be peaceful, devoid of political crisis, devoid of fighting today, uh, legalism tomorrow. And secondly, the environment must be attractive. There must be liberal employment law. Employment law must not be too stringent so as to hamper the flow of employment. We need a responsible government that will allow the existence of rule of law, that will respect the rule of law and democratic principles, e.g. the freedom of workers to form or join trade unions. That's another factor for guaranteed employment. Laws that, that, that will be liberal, that will, that, that will give people the freedom to form trade unions, that will give people the freedom to join trade unions. Also, laws must be available. Credit facilities must be available at reduced interest to encourage people who want to establish businesses in order to employ people. To encourage them, the interest rate must not be high it must be very low to attract more investors. Government should relax all laws, all barriers, preventing industry from getting access to raw materials at cheap rate. They must have unfettered access to raw materials, even at cheaper rate. This will, in turn, affect the level of production and the prices of goods and services. Wonderful student. We've been talking about the importance of employment in poverty elevation. We also talk about factors that can promote guaranteed employment. We talk about conducive environment. We talk about access to raw materials. We talk about access to credit facilities. These are factors that can promote guaranteed employment. We also talk about how employment can alleviate poverty. We talk about increase in standard of living. We talk about reduction in sicknesses as a result of the ability of people to afford drugs payment. We talk about people being able to employ others as a result of this of one skill or the other that they have learned. Now I'd like to assess you with the following questions. Please send your answer to the address. On the screen I want to read the question for you now number one how important is employment to poverty alleviation in your country that is how important is employment in alleviating poverty in your country number two what are the factors that can promote guaranteed employment I just finished teaching you this. Tell me all the factors that can promote guaranteed employment. Until we meet again for civic education, have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.